what's up guys so today's video should be nice and short there's not much really to talk about we're going to talk about the spy the nasdaq iwm and the crypto markets all right so without further ado let's get started with the video so currently clearly we can see that the spy is showing a lot of strength right we came and tested this 412 uh level this is a very important trend line basically at 4 11 um 44 right 4 11 50 whatever 412 same thing right but the most important thing that i'm trying to look at is the fact that we never came back and retested anything intraday we didn't come back and uh give back anything for the gap down and we didn't have any candles for example like we had a green day today it would have been normal for us to come and retest inside the prior day's green day and then a continue upward that would have also been normal on friday um but we gapped up each day and we never came back and retested any of these lows so that only happened two times uh recently that happened back in may where you can see right here in may uh same concept we gapped up we never came back and retested anything lower once again gapped up never came back and tested it inside the candle nothing right and then afterward we consolidated and fell very very sharply the other time was in december same concept we came up shot up never came back retested anything shot up never came back and retested anything consolidated dropped very heavily so is this another repeat of what's about to happen so it isn't so what we've been seeing here and what i basically wanted to show you guys is that that it's not a sustainable move to the upside if we don't come back and retest basically we're not creating a nice solid foundation for this to go up right if we had um taken orders and uh, basically retested these levels of supply and demand zones intraday right that would be a healthier move to the upside but the fact that's not the case is uh worrying um these other moves you can see that so this is three green days in succession so um these other green days you could see that there were times where we came back retested intraday retested intraday 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 right that's a normal move to the upside you come back retest levels of support we're not seeing any of that and that is um that is a warning sign in the short term yes that's very very strong but in my opinion it's a good opportunity to scale into longer term puts but objectively the past two times that this happened could be in a historical anomaly um we could be completely wrong but it makes sense to be bearish over the long term especially since you know the last two times that this happened um the market ended up just falling even sharper so once again we have to be bullish in the short term uh, especially as long as we remain above 406 on the spy it's a very very important level to remain bullish above the next levels to the upside are 411.50 and then this 417.40 level once we hit those levels then uh it gets much more interesting we'd have to look and uh reconsider i would have to maybe reconsider um you know these puts and everything because at the same time you want to get into puts but you want to adhere to stop losses you don't want to throw your entire portfolio into longer term puts and then see those puts down 40 percent you want to scale into them as the as the price gets higher or um you want to start piling in as the momentum breaks all right so right now while the momentum is bullish you have to adhere to stop losses basically with your puts so i wouldn't basically be holding on to any puts above 20 percent loss because there's other opportunities to go short but that also depends on how you manage your portfolio and how you're managing your position so if for example you want to get into some shorts at the close over here right solid opportunity to go short it was a prior this is a prior level of support multiple multiple times right and now this is acting as resistance you could get into shorts here and if we shoot up um tomorrow those puts are going to be down probably around 20 25 percent if we shoot up to 415 tomorrow those puts would be down about um 20 25 percent you close them out 
and then you try to um, re-enter at another level of resistance, or you try to enter as support breaks. But there's a lot of opportunity still, regardless of how bad this bullish melt-up is, it is still a bullish melt-up, all right? There's still opportunities to make money going long, as you saw today, right? Um, so just keep an open mind. These are the levels for the SPY. Overall, this, the more we move upwards like this and the more gaps there are to the downside, the scarier it'll be. Um, so that's my opinion for the SPY. Let's go ahead and take a look at the NASDAQ. So the NASDAQ also clearly very strong. Um, stopped exactly at the 20 exponential moving average. Holding strength above 307. Um, clearly holding above 310. So basically, 312 is a very major level of uh, resistance for the NASDAQ. So oh, on, also across the board with the SPY as well, you can see that the slower MACD line is starting to even out. Once it evens out, it's going to start moving upwards. But regardless, um, this you don't like to see moves like this. So um, just be careful. We saw what happened with the SPY. We saw that there is going to, historically, when this happens, there is usually a period of consolidation that ends up happening. Let's see if that period of consolidation ends up happening um, this week or next week. But just keep in mind, short term, we're still clearly, clearly, clearly bullish as long as we remain especially above uh, 307.50 on the NASDAQ. And of course, the IWM also showing a lot of strength. Coming and testing this 190 level, uh, clearly showing strength above uh, this 189 level. Same concept going on with the MACD. Uh, let's take a look at the dollar. The dollar came and tested this trend line here and uh, basically holding support. So now if the dollar can hold this level of support, and bounce that is going to be bearish obviously for the stock market um especially given the fact that also this week um railway workers are looking to um, go on strike so obviously so that's obviously not going to be good for the iwm either the russell 2000 but um yeah we have to see if dollar can hold support and then also taking a look at the 30-year bonds the bonds had another red day today. So if this level of support breaks, but then more importantly, if this level of support breaks down at 131, that could be very, very bearish for the stock market. So um, the bonds are showing weakness. There's clearly not strength coming out of the bonds. And the dollar is at support. Also, the VIX had a green day today, but the SPY was also green, right? So there's a lot of interesting uh signals going on basically we're either going to stagnate or we're looking to fall but in the short term in the very very short term we're still bullish but overall in the next coming weeks i would have to lean bearish uh based on what we saw and uh also <laughs> crude oil is doing its thing as well uh warren buffett actually got a 20 percent stake in a um in an energy company recently so that should be interesting as well we're going to take a look at that but in terms of the overall international markets the <laughs> the uk market is bouncing um the chinese market bounced out of its lows as well so the stocks like baba jd baidu uh did really really well so a few days ago if you had gone long basically here worked out really really well so um you can see across the board JD, Baidu, and Baba. But Baba is the best performing in terms of that. So that's why I was very, very excited about going long Baba. But uh, we uh, <laughs> didn't do that, did we? <laughs> but yeah, so congratulations to everyone who did go long. But yeah, so overall, the markets are looking uh, interesting. But Apple also sitting at resistance. If Apple can break above 164 and uh, get a nice solid close above 164, uh, this is a resistance line that I drew out probably even longer than months ago. Uh, we came back and retested it. So, um, yeah, it's going to be pretty interesting to see how Apple now responds at this level. We saw that Tesla is clearly showing a lot of strength. 
but Apple is still stagnating at that level of resistance. So is that basically forward looking or is that does that mean that Apple is going to be the biggest winner in the coming days because it has the biggest um, upside potential compared to the rest of the market? Uh, time will tell. But overall, um, we have to remain short term bullish. If we get a nice close above this trend line on the spy at, at 4.1150, we can continue to play bullish until 4.17. And then if we break above 417, then we're back to 420, 423. And then if we get a close above 423, 430, right? So it's just, we just have to trade level by level. But what we're seeing so far is not a healthy move to the upside, purely because we haven't come and retested or filled any of the gaps. So that's my analysis for that. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the crypto markets. This is a log chart. And uh, we saw that clearly this level of uh, resistance was acting very, very strong. But as soon as we got a green close, this signaled to move upwards on uh, Bitcoin. Uh, you can see that this is also a large triangle. So as we get closer to this trend line at around 23,500 23, to 24,000, uh, depending on when we hit this, right? If we get a break to the upside, then uh 28,000 potentially would be on the table um for bitcoin but uh this is another trend line and this resistance here is basically at 227 so we're sitting at we're at a pretty important level uh for bitcoin overall so obviously this is very very strong but things are getting to resistance so if on this chart this is the bitstamp chart if we get a close above 23,000, then it is going to signal a potential move above this trend line, breaking this downtrend and a move upwards to potentially 28. So it's going to be pretty interesting. Um, but aside from that, you know, we saw that uh, Solana clearly outperforming Ethereum and the rest of the crypto markets. And um, we see Ethereum is stagnating, but it's holding support. Obviously, this had a big move to the upside. Holding and stagnating as support is normal. Uh, we need to see it basically hold above 16,500, uh, 1650. But aside from that, I mean, the stock market, short term bullish, longer term bearish. The crypto markets, definitely short term bullish. So, yeah, man, aside from that, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. I will see you guys live trading tomorrow. And I uh, hope you guys have an amazing day. Thank you.